Hi folks, Thomas Sinson here with thomassinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question is one I've been wanting to tackle for a long time. Not sure why I haven't gotten to it, but I'm ready to do it. So it's the ultimate showdown. What's the difference between Hadoop and Spark and which one will win in the fight? So find out how I answer that question right after this. Welcome back. So today's question comes in from a user. Uh, it came on um, through uh, the YouTube comment section. So post your question down here below. You can actually go to my website and go to big questions. So thomashenson.com forward slash big questions. Put it out on Twitter. Uh, use the hashtag big questions. I'll look it up, try to answer those questions. So today's question comes in and it says the YouTube comments are nowadays there are predominantly two softwares that are used for dealing with big data. Hadoop Ecosystem and Spark. Could you elaborate on the similarities and differences in those two technologies? So that's an amazing question. It's one that we hear all the time, right? Um, so Hadoop, very mature technology. It's been out there. Really is associated with a lot of things that are, you know, going on in the big data community. And a lot of things you, you talk about, you say big data, it's almost anonymous, you know, synonymous that you're going to say Hadoop as well. But with Hadoop being, you know, over 10 years, maybe 13 years old, just depending on how you look at it, um, a lot of people are calling for its death, right? And uh, Spark's the one that's going to do that. But there's a little bit of difference, right? You know, like I said, we say that Hadoop is this all-encompassing thing. You know, you hear me say it all the time, the Hadoop ecosystem. So I call it an ecosystem because a lot of things get pulled into the Hadoop, right? Uh, ecosystem. A lot of people say things like, you know, assuming that Hadoop, you know, runs and does all the processing and, and, you know, has all the functionality for your applications or if you're running it. But at a lot of data centers, you can run, you know, big data clusters and not be using Hadoop or not be using MapReduce. And so let me explain a little bit what I, what I mean really about a true definition for Hadoop. And then we'll talk a little bit about Spark. So Hadoop is built of two components. So we separated it out into two, di two different components. And so the first one we're going to break down is MapReduce. You've probably heard of MapReduce. That's what started the being able to process large data sets. And so, you know, it's an indexing, you know, somewhat of an indexing way to do data. So, you know, if you have a cluster, you're able to run your uh, mapper and your reducer jobs and be able to process data that way. And that functionality is called MapReduce. That's one portion of Hadoop. Another part of Hadoop, the really cool, the part that I've been involved with a, a, a ton is called um, the Hadoop Distributed File System or HDFS. And so HDFS is the way that all the data is stored. So we have, or MapReduce that's controlling how the data is going to be processed, but HDFS is how we store that data. And so many applications, whether they're in the Hadoop ecosystem or you know new to just data processing or even just scripting, uses that Hadoop or HDFS to be able to be able to pull data and be able to use your data as a file system. And so you have those two pieces right there, and those two components. When they talk about um, Hadoop being old or Hadoop being slow or you know, portions of Hadoop you know, that people aren't interested in, most of the time they're talking about the MapReduce portion. And so there's been a lot of, a lot of things that have came out. So there's been MapReduce 1 and then you know, MapReduce uh, version 2 and Tez and just different components around to, to kind of compete with MapReduce. And Spark is one of those technologies as well. And so Spark is a framework, you know, it's called lightning fast, but it's, it's a framework for processing data. And so you can still process your data that exist in HDFS, that exist in you know S3. There's other other places that your data can exist and be processed by Spark. But predominantly, most of the data centers, they still have their data in HDFS. So things were built upon HDFS. HDFS is where is where your data is housed, and so you process it. Whether you're using Spark, whether you're using Tez, whether you're using you know any any new way of processing the data, or you still may be using MapReduce, but you can have all that in HDFS. So when you think about it, the two do compete. They do compete, but from a primarily from a processing engine. And so I've got a couple of blog posts out there um, that I'll link to here in the show, in the show notes. But um, you can kind of go out and see where I kind of break down the difference between batch and streaming and some of those different workloads. And so Spark really came on whenever we started talking about being able to stream data. And being able to process data faster as it comes in, and so that's where that's why you see a lot of people that are talking about, 
you know, Hadoop being the past technology and then Spark's the newer, newer technology that's going to kind of take over the world. But there's still going to be components from that, from the traditional Hadoop, like we talked about with HDFS, that's probably still going to be used, I would think, for a long time. Like I said, there's still a ton of people and a ton of um, developers still using MapReduce. And so, you know, MapReduce has its functionalities for when we talk about batch workloads and there's still development going on with MapReduce 2. And then, you know, Tez and some some other platforms that are kind of encompassed there in, in the Hadoop, uh, you know, in the Hadoop community. So I would say if you're looking at it from a learning perspective, all right, which one do I want to learn? Do I want to learn Hadoop or do I want to learn Spark? And thinking that, you know, it's all or nothing, I would say it's not. I would focus mainly, you know, depending on what you're, what you're looking to do, but I would definitely focus and learn HDFS. And so understand how the file system works and, you know, how you can compress and how you can make those calls because chances are you're going to be using HDFS and you're also going to be using Spark and Tez and HBase and Pig and Hive and a lot of different, a lot of different other uh, tools in the ecosystem. And so I would say, you know, it's not an either or. You're not gonna, you're not gonna pick and say I'm only gonna do Spark or I'm only gonna do Hadoop. You're more than likely gonna be, you know, using a lot, you know, using Spark to for your streaming applications and for your processing, you know, of a lot of your data. But you're still using Hadoop and you know the things in Hadoop with HDFS and being able to manage your data maybe with Ambari and some of the other functionalities that are in that ecosystem. So it's not an all or nothing thing. And so learning one is not going to stop you from, you know, getting a job uh, or going to stop you or prevent you from having to not learn another one. So it's not, it's not an either or thing, but um, if you're asking, you know, who will win in the future, I would say they both win. So, well, that's all I have for today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. So you never miss an episode. We've got a lot of things that we're working on. So we've got some um, Isoline quick tips that are still rolling out. I've got some book reviews starting to uh, get some interviews. So you can see some interviews that I've done in the past. And then also these uh, big data, big questions. And so anything that you want to see, just uh, pop here in the comment section and I'll try to answer it or try to tackle it the best I can. Thanks again.